first heard Tight Sweater, I was like, man, this is like Steve Reich on speed or something like that in the best possible way. It was just really, all the movements were really short, but, uh, but there was, it was like really virtuosic and pattern based and really, really witty, but also not afraid to be very emotional. I mean, it was just, I felt it was like really honest music. I heard the music of Steve Reich when I was 18, I think it was the first time. I couldn't believe my ears because it was so similar to the music I had been writing. I never heard this stuff before. It gave me, so, I don't know if, it, if it's so much as influence, as sort of confirmation to like, you know, do what I was doing and keep doing it. And at some point, that music and the music that I was, my more academic type music that I was showing my professors, at some point they just kind of get closer and closer and closer and then merged. refreshing to see a composer so unabashedly just take the influence of minimalism, blend it unapologetically with pop music influences, rock and roll, electronic music, and just be like, this is who I am. I'm not trying to be Beethoven or Brahms. I think that Mark Mellitz is saying I'm, I'm an American composer. Was it hard to get him to come to Detroit? Um, no, he was surprisingly um, you know, generous about it right off the bat, actually. I mean, we, no, matter, no matter who we were going to bring in as a composer, we knew we were going to be programming a lot of Mark's music just because we all um, really like his music a lot. We really love performing it. His enthusiasm was, was so over the top, and he knew all of my music, and his emails were just, you could tell there's just uh, this tremendous enthusiasm. He was so into it, and they played my music before, and they've done it a lot. And, and he said, look, now we want to do a two-hour set of your music. Would you come out? How could I say no? You want to give me a buzz when you uh, have your bag? OK, thanks. Welcome. Welcome to Detroit. and just trying to be really, really, really accurate. And in the rehearsals, you know, I think he can sense that when you're just trying to play things really accurately. Great. That's really great. Cool. Um, it, it, could it could maybe be a little, it's almost too cutesy. I mean, it's almost too, like, refined again. It could just be a little more. For me, it was inspiring to work with him because he, was always pushing us to get that character right in his music. More aggressive. He was just like, you know, I don't care if you miss notes, it has to have a kind of like, just grab you kind of energy.
the new generation of composers don't have a lot of like the hang-ups of like genius, you know, that that I think composers of a generation ago kind of fell into. I mean, just the, the whole like, you know, you will respect what I wrote because it's so brilliant. Just, yeah. just to get it out of my system that this was not the thing to do because this is what I wanted to do but didn't do it. So at M, instead of playing pizzicato, um, play Marco, but more like, um, well, well, like almost eighth notes, eighth note rest with a dash over it. It's, it's a very cool. kind of honest way about creating music. It's just like right. it's not trying right. to it's be this stereotype top. of uh, what a great composer is. Well, you know, it's it's funny because he's totally bucks against that kind of stereotype, but yet his music is great. With my music, it's uh, it's more of an attitude, and getting classical musicians to play how how I want them to play is not always easy for them, because it's not how they've been taught to play. To really just put the bow into it and just let it sing. This is me. This is angular. This is rigid. Um, these type of musicians, when you get this quality, it's it's so much easier to get them to do that because they can do anything. Sort of shocked that we're like, also, I think, about confidence of just being right. like, okay, we're just playing. Like, yeah. like yeah. I loved being able to hear you more. Mm -hmm. I guess the reason why I like the crescendo in R is because if if it's any bit unstable before R, and then all of a sudden we come in right at R, I don't want it to sound like we screwed up and oh, here we are. Now we all know where we are. You know right. what I mean? Like, right. I don't want it to sound like we didn't know what we were doing before. Yeah, but you know, musically too, you have this total descending line, doop, 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 all the way straight down to her, right. and you could just crescendo right through that. I don't really like to sort of classify myself as anything. But if I had to be classified somewhere, it's uh, classical music with a beat. I mean, there's a steady pulse, and it has a, a certain amount of influence from popular music, uh, but it's still classical music to me. any composer and they'll tell you that really great musicians can take a bad piece of music and make it sound good or a good piece of music and make it sound great so I shoot for mediocre and then I get really great musicians to come and just bring it up great you're totally gonna hurt somebody playing like that <laughs> <For ourselves>. <laughs> <laughs> no thank you thank you it's a pleasure